Show your support for fearless, independent media by becoming a member of Free Speech TV right now online at freespeech.org. Help us continue to provide you with programming like Democracy Now! and the Tom Hartman Program. Explain LIBOR. LIBOR is basically the rate at which banks borrow from each other. It's a, be it's a benchmark that uh, sets uh, that a lot of international investment products are pegged to. When LIBOR is low, uh, that means that the banks feel confident in each, in each other. And when LIBOR is high, that means there's generally instability. And what we've been dealing with uh, in this scandal are really two different types of manipulation. One in which the banks uh, manipulated LIBOR downward so as to create the appearance of good health generally. And then more specifically, a much more insidious kind of corruption where they were manipulating it both up and down in order to capitalize on particular trades depending on what the banks were holding that day. Uh, so this is an, an explosive, gigantic financial scandal. But Matt, you know, I was listening to uh, Lawrence Kudlow a couple of nights ago at CNBC, <laughs> the guru of the, of the business journalism, and he claims this is a victimless crime, that this has been uh, blown up out of proportion by, uh, by, the, uh, by the, uh, the rest of the media and by some of, some of the government regulators. I, I mean, it's, I can't imagine how he could possibly, a sane person could possibly describe this as a victimless crime. Basically, every city and town in America, uh, and to say nothing of the rest of the world, uh, uh, has investments that are pegged to LIBOR. Uh, most of them uh, are holding in, uh, investment accounts that actually will decrease in value as LIBOR uh, goes down. Uh, so you're well, talking- Well, I think that's what most people don't understand, that they say, well, if the interest rate goes down, that right. means you're paying less. But they don't understand the interest swaps that have occurred with many of these governments. Right, most individuals think of it in terms of their own mortgages or their own credit cards, and it's true. Uh, uh, most of those people probably benefited when they were manipulating LIBOR downward. Now, remember, they also manipulated it upwards at times, uh, but when it was downward, those individuals did benefit. But on the whole, uh, overall, ordinary people actually suffered when LIBOR was manipulated downward, mainly because uh, local governments, municipal governments, uh, tended to lose money. So if you live in a town that had a budget crisis that had to lay off firemen or teachers or, or policemen uh, or couldn't provide services or textbooks uh, in their schools, uh, you know, that might be due to this. And, and remember, even the tiniest manipulation downward, uh, when you're talking about a, 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 a thing of this scale, would result in tens of trillions of dollars of, of losses. So it's an, it's an enormous scandal. It, it eclipses anything we've seen since 2008. Because it's, it's a terrible precedent to set for the government to allow manipulation of, of the markets in any way. And B, uh, the banks weren't doing this just to make themselves look healthier. They were also doing this just to make money. They were, they were, they were trading against this information uh, in, in what essentially was the biggest kind of insider trading you could possibly imagine.